Hi! This video is all about logical fallacies in persuasive texts. At the end of this video, you should be able to identify logical fallacies in persuasive texts. In the previous video, we learned that persuasive writing aims to convince the reader to take action or simply to agree with the writer's stand. There are various types of texts that use persuasive writing, among which are speeches, advertisements, and editorials. Some articles or posts on blogs and social media may also feature persuasive writing. In persuasive writing, you may use the following to support your claims and disprove your counterclaims, appeals, and persuasive strategies. We have also learned the different appeals in persuasive writing which are called as Aristotle's methods of persuasion. These are logos or appeal to reason, ethos or ethical appeal, and pathos or emotional appeal. Aside from the given appeals, you may also use the persuasive strategies such as the following. Facts or data which are the results of studies or proven facts that may persuade the readers. An anecdote or a narrative or story of a person or character. A rebuttal which is used to oppose or disprove a statement, particularly a counterclaim. Lastly, rhetorical questions are not meant to be answered by the readers. This type of question is used to challenge the readers to reflect on the issue. There are also some errors in reasoning that may weaken one's argument when using the above-mentioned appeals. These are called logical fallacies, and they must be avoided when doing persuasive writing. Here are just some of these logical fallacies. First, hasty generalization. This logical fallacy is committed when the writer makes a conclusion that is based on insufficient evidence. This is an example of hasty generalization. I have only gotten through the first 10 pages of the novel, but I can already tell that the book is uninteresting and is not worth reading. This is an example of hasty generalization as the conclusion about the novel is only done upon reading only the first 10 pages, not the totality of the book. The second type of logical fallacy is red herring. This is when the writer begins discussing an idea that avoids the key issues and distracts the audience from it. For example, people are often told that they need to eat healthy foods and do exercise regularly. But what we should really be promoting is not that people need to be thinner, but they should be more confident whatever the size or shape of their body. In this example, the topic is about eating healthy foods and doing exercise regularly. However, the next clauses focus on being confident with body size. This departed from the topic sentence, which is to eat healthy. The third type of a logical fallacy is ad hominem. This is when the attack is not on the reasoning or arguments, but rather on the character of the opposing individual. Here is an example of an ad hominem. Mr. Sanchez gives others relationship advice, but he has never been able to stay in a romantic relationship for more than two years. So why should you listen to him and believe what he says? Instead of focusing on the advice that needs to be opposed, the speaker in this example focuses on the character of Mr. Sanchez, which is not being able to stay in a romantic relationship for more than two years. Moving on to the fourth type of logical fallacy, ad populum. This is agreeing with the reason of the majority. It focuses on the idea that if many or many people believe in it, it must be true. Below is an example of ad populum. If you were really in favor of democracy, then you would support the right of the people to arm themselves with guns so that they could protect themselves. After all, 70% of civilian Filipinos believe that they should be allowed to possess guns. In this example, the author used the percentage of civilian Filipinos believing that they should be allowed to possess guns as a supporting evidence to the argument. The last type of logical fallacy that we will discuss is slippery slope. This is making an assumption that a certain event would bring about another, although there is not enough evidence given to support such a conclusion. For example, if we legalize divorce in the Philippines, eventually abortion would be legalized as well. Therefore, we should not legalize divorce. This statement is an example of a slippery slope logical fallacy, as it assumes that if divorce is legalized, abortion would be legalized as well without enough evidence that could support this conclusion. Now, let's have a recap of the different logical fallacies that we discussed. Hasty generalization. Committed when the writer makes a conclusion that is based on insufficient evidence. Red herring. Committed when the writer begins discussing an idea that avoids a key issue and distracts the audience from it. Ad hominem. 
committed when the attack was not on the reasoning or arguments but rather on the character of the opposing individual. Ad populum, committed when agreeing with the reason of the majority. And slippery slope, committed when making an assumption that a certain event would bring about another, although there is not enough evidence given to support such a conclusion. That is the end of the video. Hopefully, you can now identify logical fallacies in persuasive texts. Thanks for watching!